I haven't done a review on this, but I really do. I really do love this controller. This Flex 4, I, I know I I know I gave shit to the Flex 6, but this Flex 4 is really a really good entry controller. I'm actually going to um I'm actually gonna buy one. Legitimately gonna buy one. I may be late to the party, but I really do like this controller. Although this is an entry in every way, Pioneer DJ somehow found a way to make a sub $300 controller go much higher priced than it should be. I know you've seen many reviews on this product, so today I'm not gonna say too much. I'm just gonna talk about my pros and cons. Now, what I like. The matte finish really makes it feel premium. Strangely enough, I didn't feel that way on the Flex 6, but it just works on the Flex 4. Excellent for keeping it clean looking and avoiding typical fingerprint smudges. Definitely a plus. However, the jogs use a glossy top, which literally takes every fingerprint ever taken in a police database. You see every touch. In other words, don't commit a serious crime and leave your Flex 4 at the scene of the crime. As far as the jogs go, they feel really, really good. They are nice and sturdy and just feel good in the hands. Although for some, they may feel a tad heavy. Backspins take a lot of pull just to make it happen. And on a hard pull, you're likely to only get about one to two revolutions before it stops. Moving below the jogs, the pads are solid. Yes, they are click to action kind found in most controllers at this price point. Pioneer DJ does give them a nice rubber feel and they are very responsive, but they are not RGB. Also along those lines, the pad modes offer excellent options. Hot cue, pad effects, beat jump, sampler, all available using the default Serato DJ Lite. The pad effects are fantastic, especially if you are used to using Rekordbox. By the way, did I mention it works with Rekordbox and Serato? While you do have access to all the pad modes on top in Serato Lite, you don't have access to things like pitch play, beat loop, additional effects, and only four cue points. Those are reserved for Serato DJ, which requires a paid license. You do get transport controls if you're into that. Conveniently enough, Rekordbox has enabled all the features so there are definitely some perks to using Rekordbox and it comes hardware unlocked. Plus one Rekordbox. Okay, let's head over to the mixer settings. As you'd expect on the top, we have navigation controls followed by a very extensive EQ section. Trim knob, three band EQ, not full kill by the way, and a color effects knob. By default, you have a filter effect, but if you access smart CFX, it actually opens up a whole new world. If you're using Rekordbox. If you're using Serato, you have only one effect. With Rekordbox, there's a multitude of excellent effects right at your disposal. Plus two for Rekordbox. The upfaders. Well, the upfaders are what you'd expect and the crossover actually feels pretty good. Pioneer DJ knows how to make a crossfader feel good. Tell daddy how you want it. Speaking of crossfader, if you've ever used an S11 or a Rev7, you would know one of the best features is smooth echo. It's an effect that activates when you move the crossfader from right to left and it creates a, well, smooth echo. Hence the name. Well, they poured it over the best feature onto this little sub $300 controller and I absolutely love it. There doesn't seem to be a way to modify the quantized beat, but the default is excellent. The only weak link of the deck is the release effects strip. They decided to go with the tap mode instead of the knob to change the effects. And I do find that that flow a little hard to get used to. As far as Serato is concerned, the effects are kind of dedicated to just one option and that's under the FX select. By holding down the button, you have access to all of your effects. However, there's no easy way to get through them just using the controller. You actually have to tap all the way down. So if you have a lot of effects, this is going to seriously slow you down. Of course, you can always use the trackpad, but a knob is just a better option for this. As far as the sound is concerned, the sound is good, sporting only RCA outputs and a single microphone quarter inch input. Again, expected at this price point. Also one fourth inch headphone jack on the front. But the main new feature is the use of USB-C as a power source and data source for the controller. You have two USBs, one for the bus power and control of the controller, and one just for power if you decide to use the upcoming Rekordbox mobile application. 
No word on the actual release date, but the guys over at Digital DJ Chips did show a brief video on how it's going to work. So basically, it's one of the best entry level controllers you can buy. It does a lot, has a great form factor, travel and backup ready, works with every software, and just a good looking device. I don't think you can go wrong with the Flex 4 or the previously released Rev 1 if you were into battle style mixing and paddles, which I am very much into. All right, guys, if you found this thing useful, hit that like button. If you found it really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. Get on my Discord, because that's what we're talking about, all things Cleveland. Terry, guys, girls, always a pleasure. I don't talk to you later. We'll talk soon. Peace.